Greetings, dear friends. We follow in the breath of cycles and we come under the energy of the Pisces new moon now to continue our work with focused group meditation for the common good. In the Pisces cycle, the topic for our reflection was selected, defined by our guardians as the will to listen, a pathway to right relationship. We've been holding this topic as the world went through the another drastic transformation. And we as world disciples come to face a new level of our responsibility. Working as one world group through different segments different frontiers so today we continue our work with accepting ever expanding responsibility over to you rebecca thank you sasha So um, we refresh our purpose in the work that we're doing in the light of what Alexander just said. And so um, we are meditating for the common good and our intention is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan as that exists beyond us and beyond our comprehension the spiritual plan for our planet through our group meditation and conversation work, which focuses the power of our joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and the Earth's planetary life. And we're also aiming to enable and support the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity and to magnetize thought forms of solution that support practical actions that will lead to the advancement of humanity. So um, in this month of Pisces and with our topic of the will to listen as a pathway to right relations. We're working with the water element on the mutable cross. And we're using the mutable cross to explore topic areas related to harmonization and right relationships so as to support the growth of a measure of peace in the world. Um, the Tibetan tells us that this is an important prerequisite for the coming or the reappearance of the Christ. Um, he elsewhere says that it's not necessarily the aim of humanity at this time, but it's, it's a condition that's needed to be able to um, allow him to reappear. Um, so let us align with the sign of Pisces and its rulers, Jupiter, and Pluto, bringing us into the qualities of love and will as we prepare to begin our group alignment through our naming circle together. So over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment 
and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. I'm Alexander calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hi, it's Rebecca calling in from the east coast of Australia, um, the Sunshine Coast, just north of Brisbane. Welcome. Andrea. Oh, there is a problem with microphone. We cannot hear Andrea. Okay. Welcome, Andrea. Anna. Hi, I'm Anna from UK. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Anetta. Hi, this is Anette from Denmark, Scandinavia. Welcome. Birgit. Greetings, Birgit from Denmark. Welcome. Brad. Hi, it's Brad from upstate New York. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, Jillian from Norfolk Coast, UK. Welcome. John. Greetings, this is John joining from Missouri, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, um, this is Lynn Green from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Welcome. Maria. Maria Christina. Kina, please unmute yourself. Oh, there's an issue. Unmute, there we go. <laughs> Greetings. Hi, 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 Maria Christina Sonadio. 
<clears throat> from Tucson, Arizona, the Arizona Sonora Desert. Welcome. Thank you. Mariana. Hi, greetings, Mariana, calling from Montreal, Canada, Quebec. Welcome. Martine. Hi, it's Martin calling in from Chateau, Belgium. Welcome. Maureen. We cannot hear you, Maureen. Probably there's a problem with microphone. Welcome, Maureen. Miro. Miro, please unmute. Uh, uh, sorry. Miro Radosavljevic, Postojna, Slovenia. Welcome. Natalie. Natalie, from the North Island, the South Island of New Zealand, the top of the South, Nelson. Welcome. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth in Corvallis, Oregon, United States of America. Welcome. Tina. Hello, this is Tina from Colorado, United States of America. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
And now Alexander will begin to introduce the questions that we've been posing over the last few weeks. And we will begin to open the circle for sharing. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you, friends. The topic for our reflection and meditation, the will to listen, a pathway to right relationships. The questions that were uh, suggested for reflection during the full moon, you can see on the screen. As I said at the beginning through this period, since we started meditating on this topic, the world has moved yet to another phase of evolutionary development and unfoldment of the plan. We don't have the luxury of direct transmission from our master as it's been 70 years ago that we could have a clear picture of what is happening and what is the task in front of us. This time, the world group is challenged to listen, to perceive understanding of what is happening and how the plan is unfolding, recognizing the signs of the time. And we, it's one of the reasons we come like this every month to share and to listen to each other and through listening each other to listen to the higher truth because none of us separately has a clear vision as we are till this third initiation we are all subjects to illusions and glamours but as we listen to each other and to the higher point holding the high alignment through the group on Karana, through re inner resonance, we can start recognizing why the truth that's been available for us individually. And that's the, the group channel. We have opportunity to perceive the wider vision Today, our meeting will be necessarily shorter than usual uh, because they're in um, 40 minutes, they begins the daily um, guided meditation by the Moria Federation for the crisis, uh, unfolding crisis in Ukraine. So um, I suggest we today will be brief and as usual, take our turns sharing our insights that came to us through these two weeks as responses to these questions. And then after uh, one circle of sharing, we will offer um, another circle for brief sharing of suggested seed thoughts for our meditations, meditation. And then Tracy will lead us in meditation where we will focus each of those seed thoughts or all together, like all those seed thoughts together to magnetize as thought forms of solution. So the floor is open. Please raise your hand and or just unmute yourself. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, Maria Cristina here. <clears throat> I will jump in and just say that I have found it necessary to listen to myself, to listen to my uh, sometimes rash comments or you know we all have well I have certainly kind of patterns that I can easily fall into as I reply or as I listen to others and I kind of default to old patterns of what and of speech and if I pause just momentarily before speaking and consider I find that sometimes my words change sometimes it will just be one word rather than familiar word it will be like oh Maybe I'm saying the same thing, but I say it in a way that can be heard more easily. And also trying to listen to the tone or the quality. Because I can easily talk like this, you know, and then go on and on and on and blah, as opposed to. <laughs> Um, taking a breath and listening to myself. Thank you. Hello, this is John Sutterby. Um My thoughts on um, on listening, I would say, what comes to mind is like a empty vessel or an empty chalice. And to listen without bias or judgment or any sort of um, inclination whatsoever. And what comes to mind is if you think of the, the chakras or even the system of Kabbalah, where you have that like um, Einsaw or white undifferentiated light and as it goes down the tree of life it becomes colored by the various um, sephiro and if one were to listen purely it would be that white light that you'd be receiving undistorted by any sort of um, <clears throat> perception whatsoever you know individual or collectively and then perhaps once you have that pure Perhaps if that message is received in a pure state, then perhaps later you can add that coloring to it based on the needs of the group or individual or, you know, ideally the divine will, if you look at it from from that way. And so this is by obviously by no means this is um, this isn't easy to do. It's a, it's more of an ideal. But the closer we can get to that ideal, I believe, is, um, you know, the, the this leads to better. Um, communications, right relationships, and then as well as with synthesizing the opposites, because if you don't have that bias and everybody comes from that, originates from that white light, then you have that, that point of understanding and that grounding. And then perhaps you can, you can add to that later based on the objectives that are attempting to be brought about. And what comes to mind too, is I, I think there's that, that statement of, one should try to up, up, to empty their cup daily so they could receive what's coming in each day unbiased or unencumbered. And so even beyond that, if you're going to listening, perhaps with each conversation and with each interaction, if we were to empty our cups, then we could re you know receive as is truly intended and then work work from there. Thank you.
truly listening, I thought of requires silencing the personality, silencing our expectations and our anticipations and preconceived ideas, and to simply share your silence with others, letting the other to fully express themselves in your presence. Thank you. Sort of bridging the thoughts that have been presented and shared, <clears throat> the fundamental approach is a discipline. First, disciplining oneself, first aligning with the highest in oneself, and then using silence to observe the self in different settings whether it is listening to group individuals, listening into the sounds of the messages that are being shared on many levels, and that awareness of one's own uh, tendencies can be really facilitated by just opening the space after one listens to that period of silence and to jot down the noticing of one's thoughts and one's reactions, whether it is in uh, a particular center or in response to a particular idea that's shared. The practice that um, in the study of Agni Yoga I found particularly useful is the notion of starting with a seed thought or idea. And then as group you know, members share, there is at least a minute of silence to just breathe into the group process and center and to bring that that was shared into alignment and bring oneself into alignment with the developing group synthesis. And if we can practice this and discipline ourselves as individuals, discipline ourselves as a group, and only retain the highest of that which is expressed. Those are my thoughts. I think when we speak of truly listening, um, we're speaking of a soul activity that eventually will negate the need for words. If we refuse to listen, uh, there will be no synthesizing of opposites because we shall never understand or try to comprehend the other person's point of view so it's um, essential to have the will to listen
is part of listening process is acceptance and whenever possible articulation that I might be not right and whatever I share it's my perception that I offer and by uh, accepting that in advance and suggesting that we open ourselves to hear the, the bigger truth and being able to open to wider truth. and asking for the guidance. Always asking to show us the higher truth. It's interesting that the word listen if you rearrange the letters, can spell silent. And so often when we're in conversations with folks, it turns out that we're thinking about what we're gonna say or how to argue against what's been said rather than actually listening and soaking up what has been transmitted that way. It's also interesting to note that the word relationship, again, includes the letters that make the word listen. I think if we listen properly to someone, we can learn more about the subject that's being talked about and about the person who's speaking and even about ourselves. This is Aneda. I think it's important to realize that we are all having our colored glasses on uh, to interpret uh, the world through our all our um, rays in our ray makeup, and uh, we are interpreting uh, the world and what we see through these glasses and. My truth is not necessarily the same as others' truth because of my race, my development, uh, physical uh, and um, esoterically, um, my age, my um, understanding of the world, my views, point, point of views and 
everything taking in in account uh, makes it um, more important to see and understand others' point of view because we are seeing the same truth but from each side of the mountain um, with each of our uh, views through our colored glasses and we are seeing the um, all fragments um, that are uh, fitting in the same puzzle uh, from each side of uh, the mountain uh, towards the same truth on the top of the mountain, so to speak. <laughs> Thank you. It's interesting that Pisces, um, through its rulers, uh, has uh, both second and first ray, and so is uh, and Pisces itself is the leading sign, in the triangle of the second ray. And so, as we talk about to reason, I realize that we also need to talk about love to listen as that is a probably more important prerequisite if we have different views to love each other or to have love in us to another human being in front of us and then whatever difference we have there's that's buffer of that can absorb whatever differences we have and still be human towards each other and have right relationship. The word relationships also has another I. I listen. In Pisces, um, we see the sacrifice and the higher love emphasized. Um, Mercury um, is losing power and instead is being replaced by the universal love, if I interpret that correctly, um, which is such a, a challenge for all of us, um, but so wonderful. And again, the uh, reaching for the soul and uh, living as a soul probably would make this all much easier as we would see everyone for who they for who they really are thank you Brad, your hand is raised. If you would like to share, please unmute yourself. 
Thank you. About listening, being present enough to truly listen, we have to be really doing nothing else with our attention, which reminds me of the phrase in the Agni Yoga books about practicing constant vigilance. And to really listen and understand, and then to think about what we just heard, to consider it, to maybe be able to use it, we have to be able to think in our heart. So you can see all, all three of the, the aspects, the, the will to do this, the, the will to listen, the will it takes to hold one's attention open and still, and the heart to, to receive the meaning and the connection with the other person, and then the mind to make use of what we just heard. Thank you. So I suggest I invite us now to visualize our group chalice and share seats offering it to the group chalice that we could take it into our meditation, magnetize and radiate those. So please just unmute yourself and offer a seat. Listen with the heart of pure reason. Harmlessness, self-forgetfulness, and right speech. Will to love. Not an attachment. Awareness. The souls of all are one. Openness. Respect for all life. Enlightenment to all beings. My truth is not necessarily the whole truth. Unity. See and love people as souls. Humility and simplicity. Many views, one mountain.
Tracy, please take us into meditation. Thank you, everyone. Let's now relax, friends. Breathing deeply as we prepare ourselves for this group meditation. Much effort, contemplation, and sharing of our impressions has transpired over the past few weeks as we have been accumulating seed thought forms focused around the will to listen as a stepping stone towards a pathway to right relations. In our meditation today, as we magnetize and radiate these thought forms out to our human family, we recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. Mentally, we extend a line of lighted energy to the spiritual hierarchy, the Christ, and Shambhala, where the will of God is known. We invite, welcome, and invoke the David kingdom, as well as the fifth kingdom of souls, and connect with those on the other side of the veil who share in our work as well as all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. The new moon in Pisces opens an opportunity for a receptive mind and a fertile imagination. Pisces is symbolized by the two fish which swim in opposite directions, connected by the unifying band or cord. Even though there is opposition, the connection between the two opposites unite rhythmically to the center, touch base with each other, and flow back again, weaving together and apart like a strand of DNA. The very sensitive energy of Pisces is available during this time. And through its assistance, if we listen deeply, we can hear the sound of humanity's voice on the physical plane. The sound of its brothers on the astral plane. The note of its group on the mental plane. the note of the planetary logos on the buddhic plane. And within the realms of its consciousness, the logoic note sounded on the atomic plane.
Will you understand me, my brother, if I say to you the following words? Spend your time listening. Give expression to the sensed vision. Cultivate the waiting attitude of psychic attentiveness. And when you hear the unheard and sense the intangible, endeavor to formulate it into words and expression of some kind, preserving the spirit of psychic drama, which informs all such events. Pisces' position on the mutable cross is paired with Virgo, who separates the real from the unreal and germinates the seed of the Christ, which is to be completed as the world savior in Pisces. Ruled esoterically by Pluto, death becomes life transcended. Lost he is and found, dead yet vibrant with life, the server become the savior and homeward turns. Through the use of our will, we can develop a new way of listening. The old pattern of response will be replaced by understanding. Old patterns of compromise will transform into a mode of synthesis. As the sound of a word is spoken, we can learn to absorb its meaning in the four ways indicated by Patanjali. First, visualize the words symbolically. See them as a picture.
Next, feel the words from the angle of quality, of beauty, and of desire. Observe the words mental appearance and appeal. It's underlying purpose and teaching value. And finally, identify yourself with its divine underlying idea. Now, friends, let's revisit the questions posed during this month on our topic, the will to listen as a pathway to right relations. And as we do this, reflect and visualize the precipitation of our work with an attitude of highest motive and best intention. placing our focus at the Ajna Center and opening our group heart, we listen to the note of these questions. What is it to truly listen?
true listening requires the relinquishing of the personality. With Pluto as the esoteric ruler of Pisces, an escape through death is inevitable, but it opens a new life, a new way of being. Detachment, non-judgment, response as opposed to reaction. These will be the new practices assisting us in our connections. Using the will and mental focus, we move out of our emotional body and into our mental body. Listening from our heart opens another pathway of communication through compassion. Ah, these are but a few exemplars of conscious alignments that will stimulate and create new neurogenic pathways assisting in the development of the Aquarian Age man, ushering him from solar plexus to heart-centered being. Our next question, how can the will to listen open the pathway to right relationships? Sacrifice. Sacrifice through the relinquishing of the personality is vital and elevates us to the middle ground, the place where polar opposites meet. This is the place of silence, where if an idea or expression is placed, it can lift us to a higher note or chord. It is the home where great transformation can occur. In this place, we can hear the colors and appreciate unique qualities. It offers the gift of a larger lens for perception and assimilation. It is where the ray makeup of a person, culture, nation, or place can be appreciated. And as we make the will to listen a new habit, our differences will begin to dissolve and our similarities will begin to blend.
And finally, what part does the will to listen play in synthesizing opposites? The will to listen takes us to the place of silence where the soul can be engaged. It is from this place that we can hear truth, no matter what words are being spoken. The communication becomes deeper and more subtle and permeates our entire being. The vibration of sound heard within this space of silence attracts the magnetic force of love. And the result is a synthesis or blending of the frequencies emitted between both the transmitter and receiver. The act of using the will to listen in this manner elevates communication to an entirely new level. This form of listening will be the way we begin to understand each other as well as the kingdoms above and below us. And eventually, as we expand our ring pass knot, our listening will enable us to hear all sentient life within our universe.
As we come to the end of our meditation, we draw together all of the richest seeds that we have accumulated in these thought forms from the month and from our contributions today and place them into the chalice so they can be magnetized and radiated out to humanity in accordance with the hierarchy. And as these offerings are being distributed, please let us visualize the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power as we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh.